Hey folks, welcome back. Uh, sorry I had a little hiatus, had a little bit of a medical emergency. Today we're going to learn how a laptop or an iPad or a phone turns on. It is not like a light switch where you just uh, close a circuit and complete it and as long as that switch is on then the lights are on. Uh, it's completely different. Uh, so we're going to use this motherboard for right now and we may pull out another to uh, emphasize the point. Uh, and I'm going to plug this in. I've got a camera pointing at the uh, uh, power supply and my multimeter so you guys can see. And I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. I'm set at 19 point five volts and I have a little bit of an amp draw you're looking for somewhere between 10 20 uh, something like that so we're at 8.5 once it's settled down and the reason why there's an amp draw is that even though there is no uh, th th this computer is not turned on it appears as though there's no power going through it, but there is. And if there were a battery hooked up to this, that battery would constantly be supplying voltage uh, to the motherboard. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why a liquid spill is, is dangerous is because there's always voltage going through a laptop or a uh, desktop. All right. Uh, a lot of times you have a power button okay and that power button is not just clicking a, a switch and it stays down and as long as it's down your computer's on no you just press it and it pops back up and somehow your your computer turns on okay well this is how uh let's find on this motherboard there are 3.3 volts going somewhere and right here uh, I've got a, uh, let's uh, turn the light down a little bit on that. This part right here is marked uh, power, okay? And we should find 3.3 volts there somewhere. So I'm just going to put my black probe on ground and I'm going to put a uh, probe right here. No, there's not 3.3 there. There we go. 3.29 is close to 3.3. This is uh, where the power button connects on this particular motherboard. Okay. Now, next to where you see uh, your 3.3, you're going to find zero. See, if you look at the multimeter, there's zero. Right next to it, there's 3.29 or 3.3. And zero is ground and I can show you that that's ground by flipping my multimeter to uh, uh, ohms mode and the beeping so right here it's beeping that's ground so when you push your button you are connecting these two pins together okay and it could even be more than one of them and so you're connecting 3.3 volts to ground. Now, how does that turn it on? Well, that 3.3 volts is going somewhere. And where it's going is right here. This chip is uh, called, uh, let me get a good spot where it will rest. This chip is called the Super I.O. Uh, some folks call it the EC chip. But it has 168 pins on it, and it does a lot of things. It's in charge of charging and uh, checking things with the system. But one of the things that it's responsible for is telling the computer to turn on. But what it's waiting for is a signal. Now, that 3.3 volts will be found somewhere around this chip. So let's look at the capacitors around it. Whoops, there. 
that was uh, ground I need to go to voltage okay we found the ground side of that one so let's check the caps and the resistors are oh there's 3.3 right there okay so 3.3 volts is going through into this chip and it's waiting what it's waiting for is a zero volt signal and the way that occurs is when you press your power button you are shorting your 3.3 volts to ground which is zero volts and ground pulls that 3.3 down to zero uh, and what we call that is low dropout LDO so this right here is your 3.3 LDO yeah uh, get that here on the there we go 3.3 3.34 uh, and it's waiting for that zero volt signal. So to show you how that works, first I'm going to turn this computer on simply by shorting at the power button, simulating what your power button would do. And I'm just going to grab, uh, well, I might be able to do it with my tweezers if I could find it. Here they are. Okay. So these uh, two middle pins where the our where our 3.3 and ground and here you can see the laptop has turned on the fan is spinning fan spin is a good uh, uh, indication that you have a working computer I don't know if you can hear that okay so this computer is now on all right and uh, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, turn it off by unplugging it. All right. Now, you can cut out the power button, okay? Because the power button right here, power, is connected to uh, that same 3.3 volts. So if we'll take a look at our uh, voltage in line, on the back right here, uh, it's going to uh, this chip right here. And most often uh, in newer models, it's called a BQ chip like we learned the last time. And what's happening is that is completely separate of your main power rail. So 19.5 volts is going through your main power rail. 19.5 volts is going to your BQ chip. And it's taking that 19.5 and turning it into multiple different voltages, including your 3.3 LDO. Now, all you need to do is short that 3.3 LDO, and you don't even have to do it at the power button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find our 3.3. Come on. And I'm just going to short it directly using, uh, I'll turn off my multimeter. And I'm going to grab a, uh, just a cord, uh, alligator clip cord, and I'm going to clip somewhere onto ground well let's put it right here we're going to clip it right here to ground got a little better grip on ground here yeah i think my problem is this one just isn't uh, latching on to this so i'm just going to try and uh, do it this way by touching okay there we go now the it's turned on the fan is spinning and I didn't even touch the power button you can even do it at the BQ chip as long as that 3.3 LDO is grounded and pulled down to zero volts uh, the super IO will signal 
for the computer to turn on. So let's take a look at another one. So I'm gonna turn this one off, unplug this. I've got another one down here. <clears throat> this is an all-in-one, came from an all-in-one. Uh, I've got some students that are learning some tech stuff and uh, one of them is ahead of the other. Can't name names. Uh, but um, to demonstrate, I'm gonna connect this plug right here. Uh, I'm eventually gonna try and get the video working on here and the HDMI uh, is not working uh, and I cannot find a connector for the, uh, here let's look under the microscope. I can't find a uh, video connector of this type. Uh, so we're gonna hardwire it. Now I'm gonna teach my advanced student how to do that and get uh, a screen running. Well, here's our Super IO on this motherboard. And uh, let's plug in our power. This one plugs into the top and shows you immediately Right there, you can see uh, a white LED on showing that there, there's power uh, present. I've wired this uh, desktop um, heat sink and fan to it because uh, there was nothing on there and I couldn't find a, a laptop fan to go on it. So it looks kind of odd. And I've stolen some voltage uh, from somewhere else. We'll talk about stealing voltage in a, in a future video, but we can turn this on the same way. I'm just gonna use this wire and I'm not even gonna go to the power. So let's go under the microscope and on this Super IO, our LDO is somewhere around here off of this resistor. Let me get in here. There we go. Whoop, it started up, shut down. Let's get it going again. Kind of a tight fit. Get in there. There we go. Now I know you can definitely hear that. You see that? So I didn't even touch the power button. All I did was short the LDO 3.3 volts. Shorted it to ground to zero because this guy is waiting for a zero volt signal and then order the rest of the computer to go through the uh, post uh, operating system test and power on. The reason why you need to know how a laptop turns on is so you can diagnose why it's not turning on. So the first thing you do is you check your main power line. Do you have 19.5 uh, uh, volts coming in? Are they going through your first two MOSFETs and your uh, inrush resistor? Then the second thing you check is for your 3.3 LDO and you look for that around your super IO. You can look on the caps around it and if you don't find 3.3 around there then there are some uh, diagnostic measures that you need to take that we'll address probably in the next video. Guys thanks for watching I appreciate it. We'll see ya.